Family meeting time, everybody. I need everybody to the couch. What? Come on, come on, come on. What daddy is doing the Legos right now? Come on, kids. You know how important dad said this is for our family. Let's go, get to the couch. Okay guys, we're gonna start with prayer. So let's focus. Come on Nathan, sit next to Dada. Shh, everybody quiet, come. All right, Father God, as we begin to have daily family meetings that my friend told me is really important for me to lead my family in. And here we are doing this 21 day challenge where we act out your Bible. Would you show us who you are and how you desire for us to live? And, and would you help us believe you and to obey you? Amen. Okay, so we're going to start by uh, picking parts and acting out the Bible in these parts. Okay, guys, so I'm going to just cast up here on the computer. Who wants to be Adam? We'd be Isaiah. Okay, Isaiah. Who, who, want, who wants to be Eve? Bella? I thought I had to say. Okay, sure, whatever. <laughs> um, narrator. I can, I can do that. Okay, thanks. And I'll play God. Uh, we need three animals. Who wants to be the animals? I want Okay, you. thank you Ezekiel for that excitement. And Nathan said so. All right, and Malachi? Malachi, baby Malachi? Malachi Why does to play a part in society? Okay. doesn't. All right, so we're gonna, we're, I'm gonna control it on my phone now on the, on the Actors Bible app. I need you guys to get some costumes and props. Can you guys props? get some props? Do so we can use? Count? No. Uh, Mommy, help him. Props is like in the garden. What's theirs? Like trees and um, Adam plants. Had a, yeah, like look. And I'll like, grab this for God. Okay. Okay? Go, 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 go. All right, go, get, get some it. stuff. Come on, come on. All right. I was, I was, I was, it, can you get something for you? Oh quick, 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 guys. It doesn't need to take all day. Can you get something for an animal, Joe? All right, I'm going to stand here to start so make it look like God's flying. Okay, get an animal. Hey, get some of those animals in the I bin. Joe, right now, get some of those bins. Uh, animals. Be a lobster. No, I found a curtain. Okay, these look And here, Joe. All right, yeah. I'm just going to press start. All right, now it's loading all like the visuals of the Holy Lands and stuff. Like, this is really cool. Why is Dad standing on the couch? Because it'll look like I'm flying. Thought, you told us not to stand on the couch. <laughs> and you told us not to stand on the table. Okay, okay, here we go. I'm pressing start. In the beginning was God. He spoke and created the world and everything in it and said that it was good. The heavens, the earth, and all their vast array were finished. On the seventh day, God finished his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because he rested in it from all his work of creation, which he had done. This is the history of the generations of the heavens and of the earth, when they were created in the day that Adonai Elohim made the earth and the heavens. No plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for Adonai Elohim had not caused it to rain on the earth. There was not a man to till the ground, but a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Adonai Elohim formed man from the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Adonai Elohim planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground Adonai Elohim made every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, including the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river went out, out of Eden, to water the garden, and from there it was parted and became the source of four rivers. The name of the first is Peshan. It flows through the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. Bedelium and onyx stone are also there. The name of the second river is Gahan. It is the same river that flows through the whole land of Cush. 
The name of the third river is Tigris. This is the one which flows in front of Assyria. The fourth river is the Euphrates. Adonai Elohim took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to cultivate and keep it. You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but you shall not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. It is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground, Adonai Elohim formed every animal of the field and every bird of the sky and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called every living creature became its name. The man gave names to all livestock, to the birds of the sky, and to every animal of the field. But for man there was not found a helper comparable to him. Adonai Elohim caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. As the man slept, he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Adonai Elohim made a woman from the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. Therefore, a man will leave his father and his mother and will join with his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked, and they were not ashamed. Now the stomping was more subtle than any animal of the field which Arden and I Lahame had made. Yes. Has God really said you shall not eat of any tree of the garden? We may eat fruit from the trees of the garden, but not the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God has said, you shall not eat it. You shall not touch it, lest you die. You won't really die, for God knows in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was good to be desired to make one wise, she took some of its fruit and ate. Then she gave some to her husband, Whistle, and he ate it too. The eyes were open and they both knew that they were naked. They sewed fitly together and made covering for themselves. They heard all night and the voice walking in the garden in the toll of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Arden Island.
among the trees of the garden. You have done this. You are cursed above all livestock and above every animal of the field. You shall go on your belly and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. I will put hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will bruise your head and you will bruise his heel. I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. You will bear children in pain. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. Because you have listened to your wife's voice and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it. The ground is cursed for your sake. You will eat it with much labor all the days of your life. It will yield thorns and thistles to you. And you will eat the herb of the field. You will eat bread by the sweat of your face until you return to the ground. For you were taken out of it, for you are dust and you shall return to dust. The man taught his wife Eve because she would be the mother of all the living. All in Isle he made garments of animal skins for Adam and for his wife and clothed them. Behold, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. Now lest he reach out his hand and also take up the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, Adonai the Harim sent him out from the garden of Eden to tear the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man. And he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden. And a flaming sword was thrown every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Family meeting, everybody. Come to the couch. Here we go. Put that away. You know, yesterday wasn't that bad. Yeah, really? I'm actually kind of looking forward to it. Wow. Okay, well, let's start with our story today. You ready, Joe? Listen. Adam and Eve began to have children, and their children had children. Some looked in faith for this coming Messiah, who would crush Satan and take away their sins once and for all. But most people disbelieved God and worshipped themselves or other fake gods so that they could live the way their sinful hearts wanted. But there was one man who believed in the one true God and, and his promises. His name was Abraham. He can play it, Abraham. God told him to leave his country and his relatives and go to the land. Sarah, you play he needs Sarah. He's his wife. Yeah, he, she's his wife. I'm not that old. <laughs> to leave his relatives and his country and go to the land that he would show him and that God would make him a great nation and that uh, he would bless the whole world through him. Abraham went there. So God told him that he would give that land for, to his offspring. But as time passed, and as Abraham and Sarah were getting oh, old, oh, still with no children, Abraham wondered how the promise would happen. Oh. After these things, oh. Adonai's word came to Abram in a vision. Don't be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. My lord, Adonai, what will you give?
forgive me since I go childless, and he who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. Behold, you have given no children to me, and behold, one born in my house is my heir. Behold, the word of Adonai came to him. This man will not be your heir, but he who will come out of your own body will be your heir. Now look toward the sky and count the stars. If you are able to count them, so your offspring will be. He believed in Adonai, who credited it to him for righteousness. I am Adonai who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to inherit it. My Lord, Adonai, how will I know that I will inherit it? Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and divided them in the middle and laid each half opposite the other. But he didn't divide the birds. The birds of the prey came down on the carcasses. Abraham drove them away. When the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell on Abraham. Now terror and great darkness fell on him. for sure that your offspring will live as foreigners in a land that is not theirs and will serve them. They will afflict them 400 years. I will also judge that nation whom they will serve. Afterward, they will come out with great wealth, but you will go to your fathers in peace. In the fourth generation, they will come here again, for the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet full. It came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, Behold, a smoking furnace and a flaming torch passed between the pieces. In that day, Adonai made a covenant with Abraham. I have given this land to your offspring, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river of Phrates, the land of the Canaanites, the Chazanites, the Kadamites, the Hittites. The Parasites, the Raphaim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Gergeshites, the Jebusites. Miraculously, at an old age, Abraham and his wife Sarah did have a son. They named him Isaac. After these things... God tested Abraham. Abraham! Here I am! Now take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go into the land of Moriah. Offer him there as burnt offering on one of the mountains which I will tell you of. Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son. He split the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and come back to you. Abram took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. He took his hand, the fire, and the knife. They both went together. My father, here I am, my son. Here's the wood and the fire, but where's the lamb for the burnt offering? God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So they both went together. They came to the place that God had told him of. Abraham.
Abram built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on the wood. Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. The angel of Adonai called to him out of the sky. Abraham! Abraham! Here I am! Don't lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and saw that behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. Abraham called the name of that place Adonai Yire, as it is said to this day. On Adonai's mountain, it will be provided. I have sworn by myself because you have done this thing and not withheld your son, your only son, that I will bless you greatly and I will multiply your offspring greatly like the stars of the heavens and like the sandwiches on the seashore your offspring will possess the gate of his enemies all the nations of the earth will be blessed by your offspring because you have obeyed my voice So Abraham returned to his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba. Abraham lived at Beersheba. Abraham knew the story of the promised Savior to come, who would be bruised by Satan, but then would rise and crush Satan and restore us to God. He thought if God was asking him to sacrifice his son, Oh, no. then Isaac must be the son. promised one oh. and that God would raise him back up again. But Isaac was not the savior, but a foreshadow of the one to come. Isaac grew up. He had a son named Israel who had 12 sons. And these sons became the leaders of the 12 tribes of God's chosen family called the Israelites. But during a famine, everybody get hungry, stand up and get hungry. During a famine, Israel moved his family to Egypt and was treated very well. Go that way. But soon, a wicked Pharaoh rise, arose and enslaved the Israelites for 400 years. Adonai heard the cry of his people. He used Moses to deliver his people by sending 10 plagues uh, against the Pharaoh of Egypt, frogs keeping them in slavery. After nine of the plagues, boils, 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 you got boils. After nine of the plagues, Pharaoh still refused to let the Israelites go. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel. Draw out and take a lamb according to your families and kill Passover. take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin 
and strike the lintel and the two door post with the blood that is in the basin. None of you shall go out the door of this house until the morning. For I and I will pass through to strike the Egyptians. When he sees the blood on the lintel and the two door post, I don't know what pass over the door. I don't know what pass over the door. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and the two door post, I don't know what pass over the door. I don't know what pass over the door. of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and spared our houses. The people bowed their heads and worshiped. The children of Israel went and did so as Adonai had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. At midnight, Adonai struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of livestock. Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants, and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. He called for Moses and Aaron by night. Rise up, did out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go. And Joseph of Adonai, as you have said, take both your flocks and your hoods, as you have said, and be done, and bless me also. The Egyptians were urging with the people to send them out of the land in haste. We are all dead men. <laughs> The people took their dough before it was eleven, their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes on their shoulders. The children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they asked of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and clothing. Adonai gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they let them have what they asked. They plundered the Egyptians. The children of Israel traveled from Ramses to Succoth, about 600,000 on foot, who were men in addition to children. A mixed multitude went up also with them, with flocks, herds, and even very much livestock. They baked unleavened cakes of the dough, which they brought out of Egypt, for it wasn't leavened, because they were thrust out of Egypt and couldn't wait, and they had not prepared any food for themselves. Now the time that the children of Israel lived in Egypt was 430 years. At the end of the 430 years to the day, all of the Lord's armies went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed to Adonai for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is that night of Adonai to be much observed by all the children of Israel throughout their generations. But when they had left Pharaoh, he and his army pursued them and cornered them at the Red Sea. By faith, Moses parted the Red Sea and the Israelites walked through on dry ground. But when the Egyptians followed, the waves came crashing in on them. Ah! But Moses led the Israelites to the mountain of God. And there God gave him special instructions on, on how to meet with him. And, and he showed him how to build a special tent, a tent of meeting for him and the people. 
He also instructed them to make animal sacrifices. What did you do to the sh to the sheep, to the lamb? What? It had to be realistic, right? Oh my goodness. <laughs> the blood of the animal was a temporary covering so that God would not look upon their sin and would be able to draw close. But while these sacrifices covered sin, they did not take away sin. Now in the tent, behind the thick curtain, was the most holy place where the Ark of the Covenant box containing the law of God. Maybe a Bible? the Bible? Yes, get the Bible. Good, Joe. His presence, God's presence, was glorious and filled the tent. The high priest would go in only one time a year. He had to be clothed correctly, covered in blood and smoke, lest he would, was it, he would have died in God's presence. Now above the tent, look Joe up here, above the tent, God's presence was seen as a pillar of cloud to cover them by day and a pillar of fire by night. Now many of the Israelites still didn't believe that God would keep his promise of giving the Messiah and the promised land to them, so he allowed them to wander. Wander in the wilderness for 40 years. Go wander. Go wander in the wilderness. But, but then Joshua, Joshua led them into the land that God had promised to Abraham's descendants. Now King David, he was chosen to be king of the Israelites at a young age. Yes, a throne. David, David, David. He was chosen at a young age because of his faith and tender, humble heart before the Lord. David brought the tent of meeting to Jerusalem. He brought the tent. Yay! And he danced before God with all his strength. Yeah! Yeah! When David lived in his house. Look, I dwell in a house of cedar, but but the only the organized covenant is in a tent. Do us and thy high for dad is with you. That same night, the word of Adonai came to Nathan. Go and tell David my servant. Adonai says, you shall not build me a house to dwell in. For I have not lived in a house since the day that I brought up Israel to this day, but have gone from tent to tent and from one tent to another. In all places in which I walked with all Israel, did I speak a word to any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to be shepherds of my people, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, you shall tell my servant David, The Lord of hosts says, I took you from the sheep pen, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. I will make you a name like the name of the great ones who are in the earth. I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in their own place and be moved no more. The children of wickedness will not waste them anymore as at the first. And from the day that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, I will subdue all your enemies. Moreover, I tell you that Adonai will build you a house it will happen when your days are fulfilled that you must go be with your fathers, that. I will set up your offspring after you who will be of your sons and I will establish his kingdom, he will Build me a house, and I will establish his throne forever, forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. I will not take my loving kindness away from him. 
I will set up your offspring after you Who will be of your sons And I will establish his kingdom He will build me a house And I will establish his throne forever Father, and he will be my son. I will not take my loving kindness away from him. As I took it from him that was before you, but I will settle him in my house and in my kingdom forever. His throne will be established forever. According to all these words, and according to all this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. Then David the king went in and sat before Adonai. Who am I, Lord God, and what is my house, that you have brought me this for? This was a small thing in your eyes, God, but you have spoken of your servant's house for a great while to come, and have respect respected me according to the standard of a man of high degree. Lord God, what can David say yet more to you, you concerning the honor which is done to your servant? For you know your servant, Lord, for your servant's sake, and according to your own heart, you have done all this greatness to make known as all these great things. Lord, there is no one like you, neither is there any God beside you, according to all that we have heard with our ears, what one nation in the earth is like, your people Israel, whom God went to redeem to himself for a people to make your, you a name by great and awesome things, in driving out nations from be, before your p people whom you redeemed out of Egypt. For you made your people Israel your own people forever, and you, Lord, retain your God. Now, Lord, let the word that you have spoken concerning your soul and concerning his house be established forever, and do as you have spoken. Let your name be established, and man the fire forever say, the Lord of hosts, is the God of Israel, even a God to Israel. The house of David, your servant, is established before you. For you, my God, have re revealed to your servant that you will build him a house. Therefore, your servant has found words to pray before you. Now, Lord, you are God and have promised this good thing to your servant. Now, it has pleased you to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue forever before you. For you, Lord, have beside, have blessed, and it is blessed forever. David's son Solomon did build the temple of God in Jerusalem. Build the temple. But years later, when wicked kings ruled Israel, invading armies came and destroyed the temple and took the people into captivity. Many were now looking for the promised Messiah to come and deliver them from these rulers. But Isaiah, the messenger of God, foretold, put the swords down and look, he foretold that the Savior would be like a lamb led to the slaughter. People would think that God was punishing him for his own sins, but really it was for theirs. Isaiah said that after that, God would raise him up again and reward him. Then about 400 years later, give her the baby. He came! Now the birth of Yeshua the Messiah was like this. After his mother Miriam was engaged to Joseph, before they came together, she was found pregnant by the Holy Spirit. 
Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not willing to make her a public example, intended to put her away secretly. But when he thought about these things, behold, an angel of Adonai appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take to yourself Miriam, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She shall give birth to a son. You shall call his name Yeshua, for it is he who shall save his people from their sins. Now all this has happened that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Adonai through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall give birth to a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted, God with us. Joseph arose from his sleep and did as the angel of Adonai commanded him and took his wife to himself and didn't know her intimately until she had given birth to her firstborn son. He named him Yeshua. Now in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment made by Quinaris, the governor of Syria. All went to enroll themselves, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, to David's city, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to enroll himself with Miriam, who was pledged to be married to him as wife, being pregnant. While they were there, the day had come for her to give birth. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a feeding trough because there was no room for them in the inn. There were shepherds in the same country staying in the field and keeping watch over their flock at night. Behold, an angel of Adonai stood by them, and the glory of Adonai shone around them, and they were terrified. Don't be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy which will be to all the people. For there is born to you today in David's city a Savior who is Messiah the Lord. This is the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth, lying in a feeding trough. Suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly army. Glory to God in the highest on earth. Good will toward men. Glory. Angels went away from them, into the sky. Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which Adonai has made known to us. They came with haste and found both Miriam and Joseph, and the baby was lying in the feeding trough. When they saw it, they publicized widely the saying which was spoken to them about this child. All who heard it wondered at the things which were spoken to them by the shepherds. But Miriam kept all these sayings, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, just as it was told them.
Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judea, and Herod, being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Itra, and Trachonitis, and Licinius, tetrarch of Abilene, in the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. The word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He came into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming the immersion of repentance for the remission of sins, as it is written in the scroll of the words of Isaiah the prophet. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, make ready the way of Adonai. Make his path straight. Every valley will be filled. Every mountain and hill will be brought low. The crooked will become straight. The rough way is smooth. All flesh will see God's salvation. John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. You offspring of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore, produce fruits worthy of repentance. And don't begin to say among yourselves, we have Abraham for our father. For I tell you that God is able to rise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now, the axe also lays at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not produce good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. What then must we do? He who has two coats, let him give to him who has none. He who has food, let him do likewise. Tax collectors also came to be immersed. Tito, what must we do? Collect no more than that which is appointed to you. What about us? What do we do? Extort from no one by violence. Neither accuse anyone wrongfully. Be content with your wages. The people were in expectation, and all the men reasoned in their hearts concerning John, whether perhaps he was inside. I indeed immerse you with water, but he who comes is mightier than I. The strap of his sandals, I am not worthy to loosen. He will immerse you in the Holy Spirit and fire, whose fan is in his hand. He will thoroughly cleanse his threshing floor. He will gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. Then Yeshua came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be immersed by him, but John would have hindered him. I need to be immersed by you, and you come to me. Allow it now, for this is the fitting way for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased.
The next day, John saw Yeshua coming to him. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin this reason, I came immersing in water, that he would be revealed to Israel. I have seen the Spirit descending like a dove out of heaven, and it remained on him. I didn't recognize him, but he who sent me to immerse in water said to me, on whomever you will see the Spirit descending and remaining on him is he who immerses in the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I have testified that this is the Son of God. Again the next day, John was standing with two of his disciples and he looked at Yeshua as he walked. Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak and they followed Yeshua. Yeshua turned and saw them following. What are you looking for? Rabbi. Which is to say being interpreted, teacher. Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and they stayed with him that day. It was about the 10th hour. One of the two who heard John and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon. He found him Messiah. Which is being interpreted, anointed one. He brought him to Yeshua. Yeshua looked at him. You are Simon, the son of John. Now you shall be called Kepha. Which is by interpretation, Peter. On the next day, he was determined to go out into Galilee, and he found Philip. <laughs> Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, of the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael. We have found him, of whom Moses in the Torah and the prophets wrote, Yeshua of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. To any detained come out of Nazareth? Come and see. Yeshua saw Nathanael coming to him. Behold! An Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Before Philip called you, you were under the fig tree. I saw you. Rabbi, you are the son of John. You are the ten of Israel. 
Because I told you I saw you underneath the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. Most certainly I tell you all, hereafter you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Yeshua proved that he was the promised Messiah and King by performing many miracles. He turned water into wine at a wedding. and fed 5,000 people with just five loaves and two fish. He calmed the storm. Storm. Peace. And walked on water. Raised the dead and healed many people, including a blind man, see. a leprous man, ah, lepers, you're healed, a woman with an issue of blood. He cast out demons <laughs> Be free. and set people free. He lived perfectly according to the law of Adonai, not sinning even once. Not everyone recognized who Yeshua was, but many people started to follow him. Follow after me, guys. Follow. When Yeshua entered again into Capernaum after some days, it was heard that he was in the house Immediately, many were gathered together so that there was no more room, not even around the door. And he spoke the word to them. Four people came carrying a paralytic to him. When they could not come near to him for the crowd, they removed the roof where he was. When they had broken it up, they let down the mat that their paralytic was lying on, seeing their faith. Son, your sins are forgiven you. What? But there were some of the scribes sitting there reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemies like that? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Yeshua perceiving in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves. Why do you reason these things in your hearts? Which is easier to tell the paralytic? Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, arise and take up your bed and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. I tell you, arise, take up your mat and go to your house. <gasps> he arose and immediately took up the mat and went out in front of them all so that they were all amazed and glorified God. They were all amazed and glorified God. He arose and took up the mat and went out in front of them all so that they were all amazed and glorified God. They were all amazed and glorified God. He arose and immediately took up the mat and went out in front of them all so that they were all amazed and glorified God. They were all amazed and glorified God. We've never seen anything like this! As more and more people began to follow Yeshua, the ruling priest began to be threatened by him. 
They made a plan to kill him. They were delighted to find out that one of Yeshua's own disciples was willing to help them. I don't speak concerning all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. He who eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. From now on, I tell you before it happens, that when it happens, you may believe that I am he. Most certainly I tell you, he who receives whomever I send receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. When Yeshua had said this, he was troubled in spirit and testified. Most certainly I tell you that one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, perplexed about whom he spoke. One of his disciples whom Yeshua loved was at the table, leaning against Yeshua's chest. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him. Tell us who it is of whom he speaks. Lord, who is it? It is he to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judah, the son of Simon Iscariot. After the piece of bread, then Satan entered into him. The Son of Man goes, even as it is written of him. But woe to that man for whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had not been born. It isn't me, is it? You said it. What you do, do quickly. Now nobody at the table knew why he said this to him. For some thought because Judah had the money box that Yeshua said to him, buy what things we need for the feast or that he should give something to the poor. Therefore, having received that morsel, he went out immediately. It was night. As they were eating, Yeshua took bread, gave thanks for it, and broke it. He gave to the disciples. Take, eat, this is my body. He took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them. All of you drink it, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the remission of sins. All of you drink it, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the remission of sins. All of you drink it, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the remission of sins. But I tell you that I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day that I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. They went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. taken a detachment of soldiers and officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Yeshua, therefore, knowing all these things that were happening to him, went out. Who are you looking for? Yeshua of Nazareth. I am he. <laughs> Judah, also who betrayed him was standing with them, when therefore he said to them, I am he. 
They went backward and fell to the ground. Who are you looking for? Yeshua of Nazareth. I told you that I am he. If therefore you seek me, let these go their way. That the word might be fulfilled, which he spoke. Of those whom you have given me, I have lost none. Simon Peter, therefore, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant ear and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Put the sword into the sheaf, the cup which the Father has given me. Shall I not surely drink it? Let me at least do this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Have you come out as against a rob with swords and clubs? When I was with you in the temple day, you didn't stretch out your hands again. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. As against a rob with swords and clubs, when I was with you in the temple day, you didn't stretch out your hands again. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. But this is your hour and the power. They led Yeshua away to the high priest. All the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes came together with him. Peter had followed him from a distance until he came into the court of the high priest. He was sitting with the officers and warming himself in the light of the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council sought witnesses against Yeshua to put him to death and found none. For many gave false testimony against him and their testimony didn't agree with each other. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build with another made without hands. Even so, their testimony didn't agree. The high priest stood up in the middle. Have you no answer of what they have testified against you? But he stayed quiet and answered nothing. Are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed? I am. You will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of power 
and come in with the clouds of the sky. What bogle name do we have of witnesses? You hold the blasphemy. What do you sin? They all condemned him to be worthy of death. Some began to spit on him and to cover his face uh, and to beat him uh, with a fist. Uh, 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 uh. Prophesy! The officer struck him with the palms of their hands. Peter was in the courtyard below. One of the maids of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him. You were also with Yeshua, the Nazarene. I neither know nor understand what you were saying. He went out on the porch, and the rooster crowed. The maid saw him and began again to tell those who stood by. This one! This, this is one of them. But he again denied it. After a little while again, those who stood by said, You truly are one of them, for you are a Galilean, and your speech shows it. But he began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man of whom you speak. coming from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry. And after Yeshua, a great multitude of the people followed him, including women who also mourned and lamented him. Daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in which they will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to tell the mountains, Fall on us, and tell the hills, Cover us! For if they do these things in the green tree, what will be done in the dry? They brought him to the place called Galgotha which is being interpreted, the place of a skull. 
They offered him wine mixed with myrrh to drink, but he didn't take it. It was the third hour, and they crucified him. <laughs> Pilate wrote a title also and put it on the cross. There was written, Yeshua of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Therefore, many of the Judeans who read, the, read this title, for the place where Yeshua was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Don't write the King of the Jews, but he said, I am the king of the Jews. What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Yeshua, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier of him, and also the coat. Now the coat was without seed, woven from the top throughout. Then the that the scriptures might be fulfilled, which says, They parted my garments among them. For my cloak they cast lots. Therefore the soldiers did these things. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. But standing by Yeshua's cross, were his mother, his mother's sister, Miriam, the wife of Clopas, and Miriam of Magdala. Therefore, Yeshua saw his mother, and the disciple whom he loved standing there. Woman, behold your son. Behold your mother. From that hour, the disciples took her to his home. <laughs> Those who pass by, pass me here, waking their heads, waking their heads. Ha, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. Save yourself and come down from the cross. Like why is the chief priest along with the scribes were also mocking him among themselves. He saved others. He can't save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, now come down from the cross. He saved others, he can't save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, now come down from the cross. That we may see and believe him. He saved he can't save himself Let the Messiah, the King of Israel Now come down from the cross That we may see and believe him From the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. About the ninth hour, Yeshua cried with a loud voice, Eli! 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 My God! My God! Why have you forsaken me? This man is calling for Elijah! <laughs> After this, Yeshua saw that all things were now finished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. I am thirsty. 
no vessel full of vinegar was set there. So they put a sponge full of the vinegar on a hyssop and held it to his mouth. <laughs> Let him be. Let's see whether Elijah comes to save him. torn in two from the top to the bottom. The earth quaked and the rocks were split. The tombs were open and many bodies of the holy ones who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they entered into the holy city and appeared to many. Now the centurion and those who were with him watching Yeshua, when they saw the earthquake and the things that were done, feared exceedingly to the desert, the son of God. Many women were there watching from afar who had followed Yeshua from Galilee, serving him. Among them were Miriam of Magdala, Miriam the mother of Jacob and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. Therefore the Judeans, because it was the preparation day, so that the bodies wouldn't remain on the cross on this Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a special one, asked of Pilate, that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Therefore the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with Yeshua. But when they came to Yeshua and saw that he was already dead, they didn't break his legs. However, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out. He who has seen has testified and his testimony is true he knows that he tells the truth that you may believe for these things happen that the scripture might be fulfilled a bone of him will not be broken again another scripture says they will look on him whom they pierced when the sabbath was passed Miriam of magdala and Miriam the mother of jacob and so on brought spices that they might come and anoint him. Very early on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. Who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? Behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of Adonai descended from the sky and came and rolled away the stone from the door and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow, 
For fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. He goes before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. They departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples' word. As they went to tell his disciples, behold, Yeshua met them. Rejoice. They came and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers that they should go into Galilee, and there they will see me. They returned from the two and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now there were Miriam from Magdala, Joanna, and Miriam, the mother of Jacob. The other woman with them told these things to the emissaries. These words seemed to be nonsense, and they didn't believe them. Therefore, Peter and the other disciple went out, and they went toward the tomb. They both ran together. The other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths lying Yet he didn't enter in. Then Simon Peter came following him, and he entered into the tomb. He saw the linen cloth lying, and the cloth that had been on his head, not lying with the linen cloth, but rolled up in place by itself. So then the other disciple, who came first to the tomb, also entered in, and he saw and believed for as yet they didn't know the scripture, that he must rise from the dead, so that the disciples went away again to their own homes. As they said these things, Yeshua himself stood among them. Yeshua himself stood among them. Be speedy, you. Yeshua himself stood among them. Be speedy, you. Yeshua himself. terrified and filled with fear and supposed that they had seen a spirit. Why are you troubled? Why do you have doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is truly me. Touch me and see. 
for a spirit doesn't have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet, while they still didn't believe for joy and wonder. Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb. Mm. He took them and ate mm. in front of them. Peace be to you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they have been forgiven them. If you retain anyone's sins, they have been retained. The eleven disciples went into Galilee, to the mountains where Yeshua had sent them. When they saw him, they bowed down to him. But some doubted. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. the whole creation. He who believes and is immersed will be saved, but he who disbelieves will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new languages. They will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will in no way hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. This is what I told you while I was still with you that all things which are written in the Torah of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms concerning me must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds that they might understand the scriptures. Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. Behold, I send out the promise of my Father on you. But wait in the city of Jerusalem until you are clothed with power from on high. He led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he blessed them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. They worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Now when the day of Shaviot had come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly, there came from the sky a sound like the rushing of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Tongues like fire appeared and were distributed to them, and one sat on each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other languages 
as the spirit gave them the ability to speak. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under the sky. When this sound was heard, the multitude came together and were bewildered because everyone heard them speaking in his own language. They were all amazed and marveled. Behold, aren't all these who speak Galileans? How do we hear everyone in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, the parts of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them speaking in our own languages, these mighty works of God. They were all amazed and were perplexed. What does this mean? They are filled with new wine. You men of Judea and all you who dwell at Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. For these aren't drunken as you suppose, seeing it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what has been spoken through the prophet Joel. It will be in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Yes, and on my servants and on my handmaidens in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth beneath. Blood, fire, and billows of smoke. The sun will turn into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and glorious day of Adonai comes. It will be whoever will call on the name of Adonai will be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words Yeshua of Nazareth, a man approved by God, to you by mighty works and wonders and signs, which God did by him among you, even as you yourselves know him, being delivered up by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, you having taken by the hand of lawless men crucified and killed, whom God raised up, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw Adonai always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore, my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh also will dwell in hope, because you will not leave my soul in Sheol. Neither will you allow your Holy One to see decay. You may know to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may tell you freely of the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is still with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would rise up the Messiah to sit on his throne he foreseeing this spoke about the resurrection of the Messiah, that his soul wasn't left in Sheol, and his flesh didn't see decay. This Yeshua God raised up, to which we all are witnesses, being therefore exalted by the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this which you now see and hear. For David didn't ascend into the heavens, but he says himself, 
Adonai said to my Lord, sit by my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Let all the house of Israel therefore know, certainly God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Yeshua whom you have crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. Brothers, what shall we do? Repent and hear my step, one of you, in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah. One of you, in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, who the food gives us the sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. With many other words, he testified and exhorted them. Save yourselves from this crooked generation. Then those who gladly received his word were immersed. They were added that day about 3,000 souls. They continued steadfast in the emissaries, teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and prayer. Fear came on every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the emissaries. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They sold their possessions and goods and distributed them to all according to anyone's need. Day by day, continuing steadfastly with one accord in the temple and breaking bread at home, they took their food with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people that the Lord added to them day by day those who were being saved. Now there was a certain man in Caesarea, Cornelius by name, a centurion of what was called the Italian Regiment a devout man and one who feared God with all his house, who gave gifts for the needy generously to the poor and always prayed to God. At about the ninth hour of the day, he clearly saw in a vision an angel of God coming to him. Cornelius. He fastening his eyes on him and was frightened. What is it, Lord? Your prayers and your gifts to the needy have gone up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Chapa and get Simon, who is also called Peter. He is staying with a tanner named Simon, whose house is by the seaside. When the angel who spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of those who waited on him continually. Having explained everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. Now on the next day, as they were on their journey and got close to the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray at about noon. He became hungry and desired to eat, but while they were preparing, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven open and a certain container descending to him like a great sheet let down by four corners on the earth, in which were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild animals, reptiles, and birds of the sky. A voice came to him. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Not so, Lord! I've never eaten anything that is common or unclean. A voice came to him again a second time. What God has cleansed, 
you must not call unclean. This was done three times, and immediately the vessel was received up into heaven. Now while Peter was very perplexed in himself what the vision which he had seen might mean, behold, the men who were sent by Cornelius, having made inquiry for Simon's house, stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, who was also called Peter, was lodging there. While Peter was pondering the vision, the Spirit spoke to him. Behold, three men seek you, but arise, get down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Peter went down to the men. Behold, I am he of whom you seek. Why have you come? Tornarius, a Sutherian, a righteous man, and one who fears God and was spoken of by all the Jewish nation, was directed by a holy angel to invite you to his house and to listen to what you say. So he called them in and provided a place to stay. On the next day, Peter arose and went out with them, and some of the brothers from Joppa accompanied him. On the next day, they entered into Caesarea. Cornelius was waiting for them, having called together his relatives and his near friends. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him, fell down at his feet, and worshipped him, but Peter raised him up. Stand up, for I myself am also a man. As he talked with him, he went in and found many gathered together. You yourselves know how it is an unlawful thing for a man who is a Jew to associate himself or Come to one of another nation, but God has shown me that I shouldn't call any man unholy or unclean. Therefore, I also came without complaint when I was sent for. I ask, therefore, why did you send for me? Four days ago, I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer is heard, and your gifts to the needy are remembered in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and summon Simon, who is also called Peter. He is staying in the house of the tanner called Simon, by the seashore. Uh, he, when he comes, he will speak to you. Therefore I sent to you at once, and it was good that you, that you come. Uh, now therefore, we are all present in the sight of God to hear all things that have been commanded you by God. Peter opened his mouth. Truly, I perceive that God doesn't show favoritism, but in every nation he who fears him and works righteousness is acceptable to him. The word which he sent to the children of Israel, proclaiming good news of peace by Yeshua, the Messiah, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened which was proclaimed throughout all Judea beginning in Galilee after the immersion which John preached. Even Yeshua of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did both in the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem, whom they also killed hanging him on a tree. God raised him up the third day and gave him to be revealed, not to all the people, but to witnesses who were chosen before by God to us, whom ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead, he commanded us to proclaim to the people and to testify 
that this is he who is appointed by God as the judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testified about him, that through his name, everyone who believes in him will receive remission of sins. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. All circumcised believers who came with Peter were amazed. Because the gift of the Holy Spirit was also poured out on the Gentiles for they heard them speak in other languages and magnifying while Peter was still speaking these words the whole forbid these people from being immersed with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just like us. He commanded them to be immersed in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. Then they asked him to stay some days. The good news of Yeshua has spread throughout the world for the past 2,000 years. Many have believed God, repented, were baptized, and followed Yeshua's instructions found in the Bible, having love and fellowship with other believers. When every people group has heard the message, Yeshua will return. John the disciple eventually was exiled to the island of Patmos for his devotion to Yeshua. Hey, Joe, that's your part. And you could, you're writing and... Act like Yeshua was about to appear to you. Now one Sabbath while he was in prayer, Yeshua appeared to him and took him to heaven to show him all that would happen in the days of his return so that he could write a letter preparing his followers. Write a letter. I saw the heaven open and behold a white horse, and he who sat on it is Todd faithful and true. In righteousness, he judges and makes war. His eyes are a flame and a fire, and on his head are many plows. He has names written and a name written which no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a daughter sprinkled with blood. His name is called the Word of God. The armies in heaven followed him. On wild horse called him, while you're following him. Out of his mouth proceeds a sharp double-edged sword that with it he should strike the nations. He will rule them with an iron rod. He treads the white dress of the fierceness of the wrath of God. The Almighty He has on His garment and on His thigh a name written, King of kings 
and Lord of Lords on His garden and on His thigh a thing written King of Kings and Lord of Lords His name is called the Word of God the heart is in Heaven followed Him on what was called in what your family name out of his mouth proceeds a sharp double-edged sword that with it he should strike the nations he will rule them with an iron rod he dreads the white press of the fierceness of the wrath of God the Almighty He has on His garden and on His thigh a name written King of kings and Lord of lords on His garden and on His thigh a name written King of kings and Lord of saw an angel standing in the sun. He cried with a loud voice to all the birds that fly in the sky. Come, be gathered together to the great supper of God, that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and of those who sit on them. The flesh of all men, both free and slave, small and great. I saw the beast and the tins of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. The beast was taken and with him the false prophet who worked the signs in his sight, with which he does deceive those who had received the might of the beast and those who worship his enemy. These two were drawn alive into the lake of fire, that burned with sulfur. The rest were tamed with the sword of him who sat on the horse. The sword was tamed out of his mouth. All the birds were filled with the flesh. I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key of the abyss, and a great chain in his hand. He sees the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan who deceives the whole inhabited earth, and bound for him. A thousand years and cast him into the abyss, and shut it, and sealed it over him, that he should deceive the nations no more until the thousand years were finished. After this, he must be freed for a short time. I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was given to them. I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the testimony of Yeshua and for the word of God in such as didn't worship the beast nor his image, and didn't receive the mark on their forehead and on their hand. They lived and regained with Messiah for a thousand years. The rest of the dead then it live until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who was part in the first resurrection. Over these, the second death was no, no power, but they will be priests of God and of Messiah and will be gained with him one thousand years. And after the thousand years, Satan will be released from his prison and he will come out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, God and May God, to gather them together to the world. The number of whom is as in the sand of the sea, they went up over the winds of the earth and surrounded the camp of the Holy Ones and the Beloved City. Fire came down out of heaven from God and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire, and sorrowful will the beast and the false prophet were also. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it from whose face 
the earth and the heavens filled away. There was found no place for them. I saw the dead, the great, and the small standing before the throne, and they opened but a metal book was open, which is the book of life. The dead were judged out of the sins which were written in the books of Freudian to the words. The sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and sail gave up the dead who were in them. They were judged each one according to his words. Death and sail were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death. The lake of fire, if anyone was not found written in the book of life, he was cast into the lake of fire. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and, and the first earth have passed away, and the sea is no more. I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared like a bride endured for her husband. I heard a loud voice out of heaven. Behold, God's dwelling is with people, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more, neither will there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. The first things have passed away. He who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Right, for these words of God are faithful and true. I have become the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give freely to him who is thirsty from the spring of the water of life. He who overcomes, I will give him these things. I will be his God and he will be my son. Then all things will be made new. The curse will be removed. The most beautiful city of God, the new Jerusalem, will descend from heaven. And we will live with Yeshua, who is the Lamb of God, with the Father on earth forever, just as it was in the beginning. Whoa, Jesus is really coming back? Yeah, I want to be ready for him. I want to be one of his disciples. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. Come on, guys, let's pray. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for all that you've shown us, God, of who you are and how you want us to obey you and to live. And thank you that you died on the cross for us, God. You sent your only son, Jesus, to die for us. And we want to receive that gift of salvation. And we say we want to make you Lord of our life today. Come on, see, come pray, come pray. So we give you our lives today. Father, we are yours. In Jesus' name, amen.